I don't drink, I don't cuss, I wanna ride on the front of the bus. Motherfucking rebel flag and your damn white sheets. Oh. Delta to the clan, we gon' hang them in the tree. Okay. Always keep the peace, holler points, bring the heat. I'm a Alabama nigga, I'ma always be free. I'm the general, call me Mano E. Lee. I'm a Alabama nigga, I'ma always be free. I'm the general, call me Mano E. Lee. Okay, it's Mano E. Lee, he keep a gun on me. I'll, I'll, always keep the peace, holler points, bring the heat. Oh, yeah. Loud truck, cowboy, gun, toting chump. Thank you, chump. Get the acting like Bray Hard, get your rolled up. My road is OCB. Your girl that fuck a nigga for free. I swim for fill a dream. Man and it from the key. My road is OCB. Your girl that fuck a nigga for free. I swim for fill a dream. Come out of broad army, you gon' need a navy. Captain Black will kill a private, loot your boat and sink it. Bet that chopper put you in her head like gaze. Need to hide your mama, sister, and your church lady. A non copper color nigga hater try to play me. Sell your rights for you racist, better run for safety. A non copper color nigga hater try to play me. Some advice for you racist, better run for safety. I'm a Alabama nigga, ain't a fear in me. A motherfucking rebel flag and your damn white sheets. Delta to the clan, we gon' hang them in the tree. Always keep the peace, holler points, bring the heat. I'm a Alabama nigga, I'ma always be free. I'm the general, call me Mano E. Lee. I'm a Alabama nigga, I'ma always be free. I'm the general, call me Mano E. Lee. I'm a Alabama nigga, yes indeed, I'm free slave. Whips to push and whips off the L.O.T. Know your man don't give a damn if you don't like me. I can see the hate in you from your head to your feet. You want me dead, don't you? We ain't living like that. We make the man's homie. Nigga, this the nigga that we at your head, homie. All that racist that shit get put to bed, homie. That's how we play, homie. Hey. And we the niggas that you wanna be From the way we dress down to the way we speak You love it, you can't help it, I know See the way your daughter look, keep she smile, she gon' go Yeah, what we do, we just took it and we flipped it Turn your rebel, made the beat and we just fucking remix it Hey, can give a fuck about a flag Watch this Alabama nigga set fire to you I'm a Alabama nigga, ain't a fear in me okay. Motherfucking rebel flag and your damn white sheets Delta to the clan, we gon' hang them in the tree okay. Always keep the peace, holler points, bring the heat I'm a Alabama nigga, I'ma always be free I'm the general, call me Mano E. Lee I'm a Alabama nigga, I'ma always be free I'm the general, call me Mano E. Lee Yo, can y'all hear me, bro? Something wrong with the, the audio. I can't hear nothing. Can you hear this? this little baby. What the f what the hell? How come I can't hear nothing, bro? This is kind of pissing me off. There's something wrong with my damn speaker now. But it's coming through the thing. What the fuck, man? How come y'all can hear, but I can't hear? This is weird, dog. That's so weird, because I can't hear nothing from my end. Something just happened. Something fucked it up. Anyway, fuck it. We live. It is what it is. So, anyway, though, we got uh, breaking news, kind of. Not really, but kind of. Like Hannibal said. He said, this happened days ago, and now they want to make it public. It happened in your neck of the woods. Now, I don't live in no humble park, <laughs> but no, nah, I don't live, you know. But yeah, it happened in Chicago. So 
We need to get all the facts. I'm going to lay that out first. We need to get all the facts. We need to see all the footage, right, before we make a judgment. Let's not be hyperbolic, but we do kind of got to touch on this a little bit because there's an issue with um, just jumping the gun, but also letting shit slide because people love, you know, making little digs and shit, making their little jokes and shit like that till it happens to them. Especially these white motherfuckers. Till to, to this shit happen to y'all when the cops kill you, you know, then it's, you know, something going on with that. But, yeah. Then we know I got to offer this as well up on the collection plate, the evidence table, rather. Uh, <laughs> how do I say this? Not all these crimes are being documented. So that's another thing to keep in mind because you see a lot of people Say, oh, well, the FBI stats said last year only 11 people got killed, but those Negroes are out there killing each other. And you know what? We can't even fully disagree with that, but there's a lot more nuance to it than that. Like I seen some dude put up a stat that said um, more blacks kill whites, which is just bullshit. I don't believe that shit. I don't believe that shit, bro. I need to see the evidence, though, for that. But, yeah. He said, I just checked the body cam footage. They escalate. Yeah, that's the problem. So my thing is, what up, what up? This is what Chili DeCastro be talking about. This is why, you know, I went on that rant about uh, the European people, Whitey, because Whitey just can't let this shit go. Jake Tapper, whatever his name is on CNN, just said, well, he got tinted windows. How do you know if he had a seatbelt on? Who gives a fuck if he had a seatbelt on? That's what I'm saying. Like when this law stuff come into play, bro, <laughs> it's only if people care at the time because thousands of people, white, black, and everything in between don't wear their seatbelts when they're driving. It don't even matter. He said, you don't believe it because of feelings? Bullshit. These people be lying on these stats. <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> these people be lying with these stats. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you got to you gotta filter these stats. Like when they quote the FBI crime stats, you got to filter that shit because people try to spin it. They try to spin that narrative. They try to spin the evidence and they don't factor in all the the the, the different necessary components of this piece, right? I'll give you an example. And they took it off of YouTube, but Professor Black Truth, yes, I know his name is Professor Black Truth. Professor Black Truth and Torian Rain did a series years ago breaking down some of the crime stat arguments, right? Yeah, stats in the hat. They broke down the arguments with the crime stats and they showed some of the, the documentation. They also showed... Um, I'm trying to contextualize it so y'all can understand what I'm saying. I'm in a loss for words right now for this shit. Uh, <laughs> they showed um, other offenders and other offenses that are not being documented or they get expunged from people's records and they don't make it to the censuses that these people take. Like, I'll give you an example. Christopher Grace, they didn't list what he did as a crime, but he shot thousands of shells at an officer or not at an officer at officers during a car chase because he robbed the bank and his kid was in the back it's a white boy and uh he was shooting uh what do you call it? he was shooting hundreds of shells at these people i wouldn't say that thou did i say thousands i should say hundreds and people gonna think i'm making this shit up you can look it up yourself i covered it on my old old channel but Unfortunately, I don't have that footage anymore. And YouTube, the way that they play, they took the shit down because niggas' channels be getting deleted and shit. So it's hard to document this evidence that he ain't got it. But well, old boy, he shot a buttload of shells at the police and they never killed him, but they killed this dude over a seatbelt. So some people are saying based off of what the body cam, because they're only releasing certain amounts of footage for the body cam with this Dexter Reed dude. And uh, it appears as if either he shot first or the officer shot first. 
but you have to contextualize that. I know they're going, oh, what do you mean? If you shoot at an officer, you deserve to get clipped. No. They went up to him unannounced and pretty much jumped him in a sense. Why do I say that? If you look at the body cam, you see this aggressive ass stud pulling on his door, screaming at him. The other person come up out the cut, screaming at him, pointing guns at him. So he felt threatened. You don't know if people are impersonating police, which they do. You don't know what these cops got on their mind, right? So he was scared, and this is my assumption. He was scared, and he shot. Or he, uh, he flashed his weapon. So let's look at the, vid the video. What the fuck? I can't even talk. Let's look at the video. He said white people kill white people at an alarming rate worse than black-on-black -black crime facts. Yeah, it's a stud that killed him. Or a chick that looked like a stud. I'm going to show you. Yeah, they supposed to announce themselves. Exactly. From what we're seeing, she didn't do that. The main officer, right? He said, niggas not wearing seatbelts. Y'all slow for that. Hey, well, it is what it is. Everybody don't follow the rules to the letter. They probably should, but you know. So he cruising, and they stop him for the seatbelt shit. And then they... uh shot his ass 96 times he was dead and they were still shooting him so <laughs> he was dead on the ground blood on the floor on the uh pavement my bad on the concrete and he was still uh being shot he said yeah just follow the law looking ass until it comes for you that's why i said like delete laws with chili bro with well, his work is important i'm not saying we should abolish police i'll never say that but Number one, you need to know who pays your police. You need to know who's on the force. And you need to uh, regulate them niggas. Because they be doing crazy shit. Like they shouldn't be allowed to do some of the things they could do. But when you have dumbass retards that just fuck with people for no reason. You know, on the internet. Oh, that goddamn nigger, he deserved to get shot. It's like, nah, dude. That ain't it. That ain't it, bro. Till your ass get pop. Till your ass get your head busted in. Hold up. I'm trying to find the video. Let me go to my channel. Let's do that. I'm tweaking. Let me see. Mule. Amaru. Give me a second. You said they didn't give they didn't give a warrant when they went into his house. Nah, they didn't go into this dude's house. This is a different dude. He said, I'm not I'm not agreeing with what dude did here. But they went way past where it was necessary by drawing a firearm. Yeah. Well, what happened? What happened, Freeze on? Hold on. Let's see. He said, I was in a car when someone went through the windshield. Buckle up. Yeah. I feel you. <laughs> Hold on. Let me pull this up. Why is this acting up, man? Why does the chat box be acting up, bro? Can't see shit. He said, you have background noise. Yeah, niggas are talking in the back, man. My bad. What's is there something playing in the back? What you mean background noise? Cause I can't hear shit, bro. So my bad. If people are talking in the back, there's people in the crib, right? But yeah, and they being extra loud. <laughs> All right, what is this? What? Is See, I can't hear shit, bro. Something wrong with my stream, man. I can't hear no audio, dog. I can't hear no goddamn audio. What the fuck, man? What's going on? But y'all can hear it, though, which is weird. That's so weird, dog. Like, I can't even hear this clip. Oh, my God. This is this is like pissing me off, bro. Something happened with my OBS. Now it's fucked up. You didn't hear anything in the background? 
I don't know. We're going to have to do this again, man. Fuck this shit. Because I can't hear shit. There's something wrong with my computer, bro. Fuck. God damn it. I'm going to play this, though. Let's see. And that nigga, that I can't nigga hear it, is though. short like a bitch. So what so I said... You, and then what so did you what, say hold on, let me try said, it. Let me test something real quick. Give me a second. Can't something wrong with my audio. He said, what's up with Gabe? <laughs> I don't know, man. What the fuck? What is wrong with my audio, bro? Yeah, build it as you fuck. But I can't because in order to do that, I have to shut this bitch down because OBS is fucking me up. Fuck, man. God damn. Because I, I got to restart the whole computer, bro. Yeah, you can hear, but I can't hear. <laughs> I can't hear any audio, bro. So y'all got to tell. He said, check your output. Let's see. Check the output. Hold up, man. What the? Okay, that's that. Then how come I can't hear the... Where's the rest of this shit? What did you and say? That nigga, that I still can't hear. What nigga the fuck? Nigga is short like a bitch. So what so I the said... Attitude, and then what so did you what, say so back what to I as said, a So what I said was... No, see, that's what I'm saying. You guys can hear it. I can't hear it. I can't hear shit on this thing. I don't know. Well, hold up, bro. God damn, it's always some bullshit with this fucking thing, man. Jesus. What up? I I got it. I got it. I got it. I bet. I don't know what the hell just happened. What did you and say? And that nigga, that nigga is short like a bitch. So what so I said. Attitude, and then what so what? So what I said. So what I said was, "What up, short and sexy? Fuck you doing?" And it <laughs> freaks him out every time I do it, and he leaves me alone. All right, alone. fellas. All right, fellas. It's up to y'all to decide. Uh, look. Y'all, you call him dude short and sexy in chat room. I don't give a fuck. Rooms. So I, I so, so I have a personal <laughs> issue with you I don't, because I don't you call him dude short and sexy. Okay, so you All got right. you got an issue. Like let's let's dive deeper. So you got an issue with niggas yeah, with I, I, I'd rather not gay. dive deeper on that. You one. got you got I, a, I you got an issue with you got a, you got an issue with gay niggas. <laughs> okay, what did you and say? And that nigga that nigga is short like. Grinch, bro, you crashing out, dog. You my dog, but you tweaking, bro. I don't know what the fuck you on with this shit, dude. This shit don't make no goddamn sense. Y'all just free zone turn this into a fuckery stream. Yeah, that made no goddamn sense, bro. You sound like Kevin right now, dog. What the hell was that? That don't make no sense. I know he trolling. Because he was trolling in Ty City's chat. But that, nah, stop doing that. That's what, Remember when I said... <laughs> The gay shit, bro, about niggas mind in the gay gutter, like, nah, nigga, you crashing out, bro. Come on, man. I know it fucks with him, cause Jerome Whiteside is a troll, and he don't like Grinch. But caught, yeah, no, there ain't no, there ain't no context with this shit, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. This that that was gay as fuck, bro. Yeah, that ain't no troll. That's nah, nigga, you can't do that shit, bro. Like, gay trolling? No. That's what I told old boy. You know, uh, what's his name? Free MJ. MJ Free. I saw, I said, bro, don't do that gay trolling shit, bro. It, don't call a nigga short and sexy, dog. There ain't no content. Like, with me, when I said that shit, that Brother Z clip, that was a slip of the tongue because I was stuttering. <laughs> and I missed the word. 
Then I said glizzied up, which is weird, but you know, that was like a, an interpretation thing. This is not up to interpretation. This is direct. He says short and sexy direct. I know that's trolling. He was doing it to get on under his skin, but it's like, nigga, there's like, he intentionally said that shit in the way that he said it with the gay context. I'm sorry, bro. I can't go down that road with you, gang. <laughs> I can't go down that road like, bro. Yeah, like he said, notice MJ don't come around no more because y'all niggas was beating his ass in the chat. He said, uh, I ain't, he said, I ain't saying gay shit to make somebody leave me. Yeah, that's bullshit. I'm not doing that. Yeah, glizzied up. <laughs> but see, that's what y'all see. That's what I mean, though. When I say glizzied up. A glizzy is a gun, bruh. A glizzy is not just a hot dog. That's y'all New York niggas with that hot dog shit. A glizzy is a gun. At first, it was a gun. It was not a fucking hot dog. That's bullshit. I ain't going. Today, I'm standing on this shit. I ain't going. Let's look up the definition real quick. Yeah, that's one of Tito's fanboys, yeah. I mean, I ain't really got no problem with it. He was just being a goofy, bro. That's what it was. Nigga, that shit mean a gun, bro. Look, let me show you this. We went to Urban Dictionary. Look, let me show y'all niggas something. Look, Glizzy, once known as a Glock, made famous by rapper Shy Glizzy, now currently known as a hot dog. See? I was using it for the, exactly. See, niggas, y'all niggas ain't gonna catch me up. Fuck that, I ain't going. <laughs> This is from 2017. Everything after this is recent. 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020. All right, I ain't going, bro. Fuck y'all niggas. I'm not going. Glizzy means Glock, nigga. Fuck y'all talking about. I ain't going with y'all bitch ass niggas. Y'all niggas got me fucked up on shorty, bro. On phone them, bro. On cut like shit. <laughs> Y'all niggas got me fucked up. No, we ain't going. I ain't said what Grinch said, dude. Fuck that. Exactly. DC niggas use Glizzy for gun, bro. I ain't going. Fuck y'all niggas. No. <laughs> See? Nah, I'm fucking with you. I ain't mad at y'all like that. I'm just trolling. But nah. He said, nah, I do got to explain. <laughs> nah, I'm putting on a show for y'all niggas. But no, for real, though. I'm trying to delineate. Hold on. Yeah, gay gutter niggas. I'm trying to delineate between uh uh what Grinch said. Let me play this. See, y'all niggas just fuck this shit up, bro. Y'all niggas fuck this stream up, man. See, leave it to niggas to fuck some shit up. What did you and say? And that nigga, that nigga is short like a bitch. So what so I said, and what so what, so what I said, so what yep. I said was, what up, short and sexy? Fuck you doing? And it <laughs> freaks him out every time I do it, and he leaves me All right, alone. Fellas. All right, fellas, it's up to y'all to decide. Look, look y'all, you call him dude short and sexy. And it, look, I don't give a fuck. Room. I get what he's saying. I get, I get it. But no, I'm not doing that. Like, there's a difference. Like I said, my he, Grinch is my dog, bro. <laughs> yeah exactly so what if he says gay shit he gets pussy I mean I don't know man just don't do stop doing this shit man <laughs> stop making gay jokes I know Jerome Whiteside is a hating ass nigga I know he's a troll yes but don't don't say what's up short and sexy to him bro or spin it man like god damn I can't defend you dog <laughs> I'm not saying he needed my defense, but I said I can't defend this shit, bro. Yeah, he said hurts my soul, man, for real. Cause Grinch is my nigga, man. But this shit ain't it, bro. Like y'all, y'all right? He said your reaction to glizzied up was funnier than the actual comment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He said I ain't going, bro. Fuck that. Nah, nah. You good, freeze on? I, I'm, I'm fucking with y'all, man. It's all good. I'm trolling y'all niggas. It's all good. He said, um. He said, uh, you didn't have to play it or replay. <laughs> nah, 
We done with that. But, no, nah, you good. You good. He said, Grinch is just out there. I have more of an issue with him saying, do you have a problem? Yes, exactly. That was That's even worse, man. That make the shit worse. When he said, hey, uh, what did what did he say? I'm gonna have to play it again. <laughs> so I, I so so I have a personal <laughs> issue with you. I don't because I don't you call him dude short and sexy. Okay, so you All got right. you got an issue. Like let's let's dive deeper. So you got an issue with niggas? Yeah, with I, I, I'd rather not gay? dive deeper on that. You one. got you got a, I, you got an issue with dry. you got a, you got an issue with gay niggas? Bruh. There ain't no coming back from that, bro. Come on, now. you got to clean up your image with that shit, bro. That's crazy. Yeah, that's that's what I agree with y'all. That's the worst part, man. That's nigga, nigga. Yeah, that's gay gaslight. That's what Kevin Samuels did, bro. Like, nah, we can't do that shit, bro. Can't you can't do that shit? Yeah, that's a clip, man. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Anyway, though. God damn. Exactly. Yeah. I'm on the same page, new. Yes, I do have a problem with gay people. What you mean, bro? Huh? Nigga. Run that back? Like, huh? What? Nigga, that's crazy, bro. What a real talk. That's crazy as hell, dog. Yeah, man. Gabe trying to hold niggas accountable, bro. <laughs> You can't, yeah, Gabe trying to hold niggas accountable. Give me a second. I got to put this, um, no, no, I don't, wait, wait, hold up. What the fuck? There we go. All right, bet, bet. All right, back to the real topic. See, y'all, y'all kind of making me want to make this a fuckery stream right now. Okay, here's what we going to do. We're going to talk about this cop thing, and then we're going to spin around to, a fuckery stream. Fuck it. Fuck it. It's too late now. You have been listening to Mayor Brandon Johnson and Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox speaking about the police involved shooting that killed 26 year old Dexter Reed. We have been following this breaking news all morning. The body cam video was just released this morning showing the deadly shooting during a traffic stop by Chicago police on March 21st of this year. Let's get right to CBS 2's Chris Ty is in the newsroom. He's been combing through the footage. Chris? Yeah, Jim, for the last 25 minutes, we've been listening to State's Attorney Kim Fox, the head of COPA, the Civilian Office of Police Accountability, and Mayor Johnson talking about this incident from 19 days ago that led to the death of Dexter Reed over in Garfield Park. I want to play for you a moment of what happened in the seconds before the fatal shooting, which as you watch this, think about two things. Number one, the purported reason for this police pullover was because of a seatbelt violation. It was five ununiformed officers from a tactical unit over in the 11th district who they say he fired first. That will be the central question moving forward. Did he fire first and why was that group of five un uniformed officers swarming on a vehicle in the middle of the day. Let's watch it and we'll talk about it on the other side. Roll the window down. What are you doing? Roll this one down. Roll that one down too. Hey, don't roll the window up. I'm don't roll down. the window up. Okay, okay. Do not roll the window up. Okay, okay. Unlock the doors Open now. The door. Unlock the doors now. Door. Unlock the doors door. now. Hey, Open the door now! Open the door now! Open the door now! I'm six four David, shots fire, shots fire! Shots were indeed fired, 96 of them. Over the course of just 41 seconds, the head of the Civilian Office of Police Accountability said central to their investigation moving forward is to examine the propriety of that traffic stop. Again, the reason given is that it was an individual, Mr. Reed, not wearing a seatbelt. That is the video from the body-worn camera of the officer. Let's move to a camera angle from across the street, which shows this from a different angle. Again, the central question is who fired first? COPA says it was Mr. Reed. We are going to hear from Mr. Reed's family on that matter coming up at noontime today. They're holding a press conference. Uh, the state's attorney says by the end of this week, her office hopes to interview the officers involved. One of those five officers critically involved in all of this remains hospitalized.
Mayor Johnson saying if not for the grace of God, that officer could have been killed if that bullet struck just a few inches away. Let's listen to the head of COPA from just moments ago. Upon stopping Mr. Reed's vehicle, officers surrounded his car and began giving him verbal commands. The situation escalated when Mr. Reed did not comply with those commands and multiple officers pointed their guns at him while continuing to shout commands. Within less than a minute, an exchange of gunfire occurred, leaving Mr. Reed dead and an officer shot in the forearm. So there are two big questions here. There's a lot of questions, Jim, but the two big ones are number one, did he fire first and why did the officers show up there in the first place? It is curious, certainly, that five ununiformed officers come to a seatbelt violation. The other big question from Kim Fox's perspective, she, of course, the Cook County State's attorney, is was the use of force here reasonable? COPA seems to indicate here in the early innings of this that it was reasonable. Reasonable, but there's a whole host of questions and interviews that need to be done to kind of button that up. We're going to have much more. This story is going to be evolving throughout the day. Again, we're going to be hearing from Mr. They thought he stole the vehicle. They thought he stole the vehicle and they used the seatbelt as a way to do that, to facilitate that. So they was trying to get him for that because it looked banged up, right? And then somebody probably saw the gun and then it escalated from there. He probably panicked and then grabbed the gun because he thought they were going to shoot him. So I guess he said, fuck it. You know, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in his head you feel, or what did go on in his head because he's dead now. He's 26. But, yeah, uh, I don't know. The point, though, regardless of what even comes out, is you should not be using this excessive amount of interest in people. It's ridiculous. Why are there five plainclothes officers not even announcing who they are trying to open the door, pointing the gun at you, talking about, get out the fucking car. No! Get down! Move! Fire! Like, bruh, why are they doing that? That's number one. Number two, why are there female officers on the force? Yes, I said it. Pigtails, as we call them affectionately, are some of the first to shoot, and they shoot a lot. They empty the clip. They feel some type of power when they get in these positions, and they empty the full clip. Get on the ground! That's what they do. Yeah, the police are the biggest gang in the world, besides the bankers. And they're the enforcement arm of the bankers. Yeah, he said, I have no comment. Yeah, man, I need to see more evidence before I make an official judgment. But that's my initial take, right? They're saying that he shot first, but we don't know. We haven't confirmed that, right? We can't confirm nor deny at this time. Get on the ground! I don't want to hear that. Yeah, a lot of males are bitch made, which is sad. But So this dude is dead over a seatbelt. He's dead over a fucking seatbelt. Now... Any man can say what he would do. Personally, what I would have done if I was in that situation, I would have just got out the car. I, I'll fight the case. I'll fight for police brutality later. But y'all got to know that the city of Chicago paid 600 to $8 million. Excuse me. 600 million to $800 million in this shit. This is a problem. So it's not like this shit don't go on. Sometimes you don't even hear about it. That's why I said with the stats, you got to watch the older oh, crime stats say that the niggers kill white people. I don't believe you. That stat needs to be triple vetted and put into whatever context necessary. I don't know. I have to see it. Because I don't believe you because motherfuckers lie all the time. So I don't believe motherfuckers. Like, they lie on the news. I remember uh, <laughs> a brother caught them lying about a little kid. They said he was pointing a gun at the police and saying, yeah, I want to kill cops. But when you look at the footage that was live on air and a nigga recorded it, uploaded it to YouTube, the kid says, yeah, I want to kill criminals and be a policeman. But they tried to flip it. I think this was CBS or Channel 7 or something like this. This was Chicago. He did this shit. Or the the news media did it. So motherfuckers lie all the time. I don't believe fucking stats till I can verify it. 
like these back the blue no matter who cunts until it happens to them it's not a problem now it wasn't tamir rice it was a different nigga but even tamir rice he wasn't in chicago even tamir that dude used excessive force on him the dude was playing with water guns should he have been doing it no but everybody does that shit right he said i agree about the stats yeah i need it's fishy bro because these are the same science people who said you need to get the vaccine. I'm going to get out of there. I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to shut up. These are the same fucking statisticians and scientists and all this shit that say all this other shit like women can be men, uh, whatever. And I, I know in the mainstream scientific community, there's different disciplines and not everybody agrees on shit. But generally, dog, motherfuckers is on some horse shit with this. So I'm very tenuous. I'm very careful to believe random statistics or even fbi statistics right i'm very careful to believe people i need to see the evidence for myself because i anecdotally you could argue but i have seen things that go against these narratives that people try to back up with stats so it's like what you're saying has some truth to it to a degree but is it fully true is it true in all cases no that's the thing. So we got to approach this carefully. I'm just keeping y'all updated. We'll see what happens. Yeah, cops costing the city more money than the criminals, actually, to be honest. And the people like damaging property. Yeah. He said it needs to be verified. Correct. He said, I don't even think closed officers are supposed to try and open the door. Nah, they not. From what I heard, they not. Yeah, they lie on the news? No way. Exactly. They lie on the news all the time. But see, that's what I was saying about that whole whitey discussion. They lie on the news and the white people who are like conservative and shit will believe them for January 6th. Oh, yeah. You know, that's a lie. They're lying about Trump and these people. But when it comes to this, they can't lie. This duplicity got to stop. The media should be called into question on everything that they do forever. And to the end of time. Any logical, intelligent person would do that. That's what I do. I question everything that I hear. Even shit that I tell y'all I firmly believe in can show evidence of. I questioned it before I came to that conclusion. And new information can come and make me change my opinion and my viewpoint. Right? This linear thinking is what cripples humanity. Especially lower class humans. That's why you can never rise above your class because your mind is too low <laughs> base, right? Yeah, Iraqs didn't have weapons of mass destruction. The Iraqis, I mean, Iran, you know, whatever. Get the fuck out of here. Iraq, Saddam, he didn't have weapons. Yeah, no, he didn't. Yeah, it ain't journalism, bro. It's just opinionism. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, that's all media is propaganda. But, but, there's a big but. She thick, though. Is the police officer thick, though, right? But, we know that it's propaganda, but that doesn't mean that you can't speak truth to power, right? Whatever that means. In whatever situation you're looking at. Just because we know it's propaganda doesn't mean it has to be negative. Propaganda can be positive, right? He said, Whitey can never have accurate stats about Blackie. The only time he cares to be accurate is when he wants to talk about another man's Johnson. Yikes. He said, Twitter be arguing, airing these lying, goofy news folks out. Yep, for real. For real. He said, that's why I don't fall for situations that are a little too convenient to be taken as true. Correct. He said, how much bullshit underneath the sprinkles of truth? Correct. It needs to be verified. Yeah, he said cops costing the city more than <laughs> more than the city makes. Yeah, that's money for a small country, man. Talking about six hundred million. Where are they getting the money from? Let me show you where they get the money from. We gonna do this real quick. I have time right now. Then we gonna move to uh the fuckery. Once I wrap this up, but let me show y'all something. Let me show the Nakers something real quick. Hold up. Let's see. Hold up. Give me a second. Very important to understand this. I think I think it's in here. And salute to the doc. Oh, y'all, why you keep showing Ali for a reason, nigga? 
I'm showing Ali's work for a reason. Like, niggas use this shit in schools to teach people with. Is this it? Nah, this ain't it. Yeah, Y'all ain't ready for this part. I'm not going to show you what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> I'm not going to show you what I'm looking at right now. Let me get out of there. Uh, Hold up. Let me show you this shit. He said whites using stats from a position. Yeah, because they ain't fighting no police. They're not fighting the power structure. They're just beefing with another rat in a cage. Like Nettie Myra put in the chat, rats in a cage. From that gentleman who did that video, which is an excellent video. But he's right. Instead of actually addressing the problem, whitey wants to fight blacky or mexican -y and everybody's fighting each other instead of looking at the real problem, these fucking bankers, that's how you got the police state. That's how you got the police state. And I could trace that all the way back. I could trace that shit all the way back. And he said, I had a female officer pull me over on my bike. She was smiling and playing with her hair and shit. I was fighting the urge to call her out for being goofy. Yeah, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. I almost fucked a few officers, bro. At different periods in my life. Because, you know, I was flirting with them and they were flirting back. So I'm like, shit. Because, you know, some of them look a little sexy. You feel me? Some of them, them female peace officers, what they're supposed to be as peace officers. But, you know, some of them hoes a little, you know, they got a little booty on them. Shit. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, I'm looking at it. I'm like, hey, my eyes are bucking. Hold up, man. You said what the Ali book? Oh, blah, blah. What is the Ali book? It's called Law Masters. But I'm not looking at that one right now. I'm trying to find a different one. Hold up. Give me a second. Where is it? Yeah, this ain't prevalent right now. Hold up. I'm trying to find the passage in here. Right. And salute to Ali, man. One of the greats, man. <laughs> Gotta shout him out because nobody was talking this shit till he came on the scene other than like Steve Coakley type shit. You know, a few people here and there type shit. Is this it? No, nah, that's not it. Where is it? Fuck, man. Where is this shit? But it, yeah, exactly, reality. If she was, yeah, no bacon. Bacon is haram. You're right. My bad. I forgot. I had a lapse in judgment. You said the officer trying to give you a piece. Yeah. <laughs> a slug to the brain. <laughs> Hell no. The officer was glizzied up. <laughs> I'm going to troll y'all niggas with that, y'all. No, no, hold on. I think it's in this book. Hold on. Give me a second. I apologize, man. Give me a second. I'm trying to show you the people who land to the Federal Reserve because you need to know who runs this shit. I'm a sh I showed it already, but I'll show it again. Right. He said, shame, shame. Shame. <laughs> Where the fuck is this document, man? Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah, excuse me? <laughs> excuse me, nigga? Oh, God. That's crazy. Hell no. Hold on. Where the fuck is this shit, bro? I know I saw it. Oh, here we go right here. Salute to my boy Ali, man. Y'all give Ali his credit. Check this out. What the fuck? Check this out right here. Let me take this off the screen. How do I zoom in? Yeah, the creature from Jekyll. Check this out right here. So, you know, his his printed hardcover books, you know, they, they don't have typos like this. But check this out. The Sedition and Treason Files. Okay, let's go. The information. This information will change you forever. Right now, as we speak, there are 21 companies who own everything, including the so-called government and its subject citizens who are in commerce considered collateral. Ooh, this is the birth certificate, SB. Here we go. Yep. Goods in commerce is what every subject U.S. citizen is. That's why I tell you, you an acre, you're a subject citizen. You're a oh, whatever group, you know, whatever other group that falls in the 14th Amendment. You are indeed a, a trade good of the United States. Oops. Y'all ain't going to like this. And you're going to disagree with <laughs> you're going to disagree with this shit. But I'm about to blow your mind real quick. 
He said, in fact, it is such a serious operation that no subject can even move without the permission from the godlike bondholders. Check this out. This is your God, not Jesus, not Allah. These 21 companies are your God on this earth. And these people do a lot of weird shit behind the scenes. Let's keep going. Right. Yes. If you get in your car and move without a license or registration card, you will have the car confiscated. You will be fined, and you may be arrested. Imagine controlling someone's someone's right to move. That's what happened to this dude, Dexter Reed. That's why. Oh, is it legal? Yes, it is legal because they own your ass. If you are a 14th Amendment citizen, they own your ass. Right. But yeah, speaking of Hannibal's point, running around saying you are more is not going to fix this problem. That's why I said I want to do what Arna's doing. There's a reason why I keep showing this nigga's content. Right. He said, not that. No, nah, you good. I'm going to check that out. Yeah. No, we're going to check that out right after I get through with this shit real quick. These jackboot thug pigs, man. As Chili says, check this out. Read this. There are 21 bondholders. Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Primary dealers list. Blah. Primary. Blah. What the fuck? Primary dealers list. Primary dealers service trading counterparties of the New York Fed in its implementation of monetary policy. This role includes the obligations to one participate consistently in open market operations to carry out U.S. monetary policy pursuant to the direction of the Federal Open Market Committee, FOMIC. And two, provide the New York Fed's trading desk with market information and analysis helpful in the formulation and implementation of monetary policy. Primary dealers are also required to participate in all auctions of the U.S. government debt and to make reasonable markets for the New York Fed when it transacts on behalf of its foreign well, of its foreign official account holders. Let's keep going. <clears throat> yeah, the stutter comes before the clip. <laughs> I fucking hate stutter. I think I have brain damage, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. Because I used to get into a lot of fights and I used to, you know, fall on my head and shit. Like right where the learning and nerve shit is. Uh, speech. Where the speech shit is. I ran into a tree like full on. Like a bull charging into the field. I ran into a tree and smacked the top of my head. I think I might have brain damage, dog. I think I might be an ableist. Or <laughs> an anti-ableist ableist. Or whatever the fuck you call it. I'm joking. But nah, I think I do have brain damage, so I'm not going to lie to you. But anyway, uh, anyway, Bank of Nova Scotia, New York agency, BMO. This y'all niggas bank with BMO Harris. Keep doing that shit. Keep, yeah, not enough butter. Get out of here. It's all that SBE. Yeah, all the SBE is making me retarded. BMO Capital Markets Corp. BMP Paribas Securities Corp. Barclays Capital Inc. <laughs> Cantor Fitzgerald and Co. Citigroup. Uh oh. Are you niggas banking with Citigroup? Citigroup Global Markets Inc. Credit Susi? Credit Sissy. Kevin Samuels. No, I'm playing. Credit Susi Securities. USA LLC. Some of these are not even US companies. You when you really dig deep, you're gonna find like it's fucked up, bro. And China owns the bonds, the United States. So I'm gonna get out of there. Let me get out of there. <laughs> he said, Daiwa Capital Markets, America, Inc. Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank, which went, quote unquote, insolvent, right? Or whatever. Securities, Inc. Goldman Sachs. HSBC Securities. Jeffries and Company. JP Morgan Securities. Look, LLC, all you niggas hating on LLCs, a LLC gets the money from your taxes. All the niggas hating on the LLCs. Then LLC gets money from your taxes. Let's keep going. J.P. Morgan, Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner, and Smith Incorporated. Muzio, Muzo Securities, USA. Morgan Stanley & Co. Nomura Securities. RBC Capital Markets. RBS Securities. SG America Securities. UBS Securities. And this is old, so they might have more, right? Yeah, you see Wells Fargo on there, right? They're, uh, what they do is they have like banking houses. So they'll have 
Citigroup and Wells Fargo will be under that. I'm not saying that it is. I'm just saying, like, for example, these things, these different banks will be under that. Like my my granny before she died was with Huntington. I think Huntington is in a Huntington is in either Citigroup or J.P. Morgan or something like that. Maybe even Goldman Sachs. He said, who? Truest up there? I don't think so. You got to look into some of these companies, but let's keep going. I'm trying to keep going for time uh, purposes. These 21 godlike bondholders can take all of their collateral and open an account with the Federal Reserve and receive advances or money off of security of their collateral. You and everything you thought you owned. So they can take money off of you. Indirectly and directly. They use the IRS to do it directly. They do this at the Federal Reserve discount window. Imagine being able to go and open an account with the Federal Reserve. Nope, not you. Only the slave masters can. And here's what they need to do so. Let's keep going. We're going to educate today. Federal Reserve discount window. Pledging collateral. All discount window advances must be secured by collateral acceptable to the Reserve Bank. What types of assets can I pledge to the discount window? The following types of assets are most commonly pledged to secure discount window advances. Obligations of the Treasury. Obligations of the government. Agencies, government, sponsored enterprise, which includes FBI, police type shit, all that. Obligations of states or political subdivisions. Uh-oh. Collateralized mortgage obligations. Collateralized asset-backed securities. Corporate bonds, money market instruments, residential real estate loans, commercial, industrial, or agricultural loans, commercial real estate loans, consumer loans. Then they say, check with your reserve bank if you have questions. The 21 companies are called primary dealers. This is because they are the primary slave masters over all collateral and the primary entities that can service and fund the buying of debt obligations. They give the market data to the Fed in order for it to do its job. They are private corporations. Imagine being indicted by the state of whatever. And in reality, you find out a private company is the interested party and that the state is just a legal fiction acting as a trustee over the claim. This is why. Because my father be asking, well, why black folks? Why are black folks so targeted? This is why. This is why I'm telling you right now, you want <laughs> you want to know racism and, and all the other isms and all the rest of this stuff. It's because it is disprove me on this. Go ahead, do it, do a stream, do a pod. <laughs> anyway, he said this so-called government does not audit or regulate these entities. I'm going to repeat that again. This so-called government does not audit or regulate these private corporations. So if they make a mistake, there is no penalty. They can literally steal from you and the Fed ain't going to do shit about it. Ain't going to do a damn thing. These people could target me for saying this shit. They probably won't because ain't nobody going to do shit with it. But yeah, except those who know. But yeah, they could target. They could just destroy my life and fuck me up in the game forever. And I can't get any recourse, at least through the government. Because the government works for these people. They're trustees for them. Right? Let's continue. And they do business with citizens all the time. So here's the corporation doing business with citizens that has no liability. Right? Let's continue. Yeah, mortgage. There you go. Federal Reserve Bank of New York, primary dealers. Look, he, <laughs> he put the little smiley face frowning. That's funny. He said the Federal Reserve Bank of New York trades U.S. government to select other securities with designated primary dealers, which include banks and security broker dealers, securities broker dealers. Uh, let's continue. Weekly transactions, market share data and primary dealer list are updated periodically. Much of the information is submitted voluntarily. The bank expects primary dealers to submit accurate data, but the bank itself does not audit the data. There we go. This is all legit. This is not me making this shit up. Ali did not make this shit up. This is real. This is what we're living under right now as we speak. Right. Let's continue. 
when they give you your refund, that's a pittance. It's like throwing you, I don't know, say you, you're a sharecropper and you worked all year to grow this food. All they doing with that rebate, if you make under a certain amount, they just give you back what you make. <laughs> you're a fucking slave. We're all slaves in this shit unless you get out of this shit. That's why I say, look, if you're going to have a woman, she got to be hip to this shit. She better let me fucking lead, bro. <laughs> I know this sounds like SBE, but it is, but it isn't. I'll tell you why it is and isn't. It is SBE because, yeah, you can't make anybody lead. They have to want to or follow, I should say. You have to, you know, have them follow you because they want to. Then the the part where it's right, the SB is correct, is if you don't have a woman that understands this is the type of time that you want trying to break the chains from this, you're going to be fighting forever. You're going to be unequally yoked, right? Like the NGEs, the 5% brothers try to escape this shit. They don't have all this shit, though. A lot of people don't have all the, the pieces. They have pieces, but not all of the pieces. And so we get caught up. Like my brother, uh, Namor was talking his shit. I know I shouldn't be mentioning this shit, but I'm going to have to do it now. Uh, Namor had his shit with his homie or his homie who was in the, the NGE. The wife did not understand what he was doing with the finance. So when the police came through, uh, she kind of spilled the beans. She had filed for Section 8, and that tipped them off to the fact that he was moving outside of the bounds of this shit that we're looking at. And so his wife inadvertently got him fucked up in the game. You got to watch this shit. That's why I say I'm not getting married. There's no fucking way I'm getting married, especially in this system, because you're a slave to this forever till you die. You understand that, right? Unless you... D national, not D national, unless you live in another jurisdiction, you are a slave to these 21 companies. All of y'all in the chat are a slave to these people, me included, until you break free. But there's a very specific way that you have to break free. It's not just, oh, I declare that I'm a sovereign citizen, free man on the land. That doesn't work. You need a governing body to be able to expatriate to. Why do you think the colonists? did what they did when they set up this country. A lot of them did not intend for it to go this way right now, but what do you think they did when they set this shit up? They had to expatriate. A lot of them became Native American chiefs. I'm going to get the fuck out of there, my bad. This is way above people's head. Yeah, a slave, especially if you're a bad object, correct? Yeah, the freedom talk makes me woozy. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have Christian gift shangle, you'll be in the doghouse, yeah. Said so the women want to be in the system. Correct. Because it's safe and it's comfortable. And women love comfort. <laughs> and weak men love comfort. Yeah, exactly, Hannibal. But black people are specifically targeted. Why? Because of your aboriginal heritage. That's what I'm trying to tell these fucking dumbass niggas. I've studied this shit for, what, six, seven years. Not just Ali's work either. I've studied this for seven fucking years. It is not because you are a fucking African or descendants of slave or descended from a slave. Rather, it is not that that is not the reason why they keep targeting you at all. Some people know who you are, even if you don't know who you are. Let me keep going, though. Anyway, so the most important point is that every state is doing business with these entities or one of its subsidiaries. So when you get the license and you think it's from the government called the Commonwealth of Penn, Pennsylvania so Philly niggas they gotta go it's actually from the beneficial owner of the general obligation bonds of the state incorporated therefore it was Wells Fargo and company and the depository seed and company well, hold up let me rephrase that it was Wells Fargo seed and company and the depository trust company who issued you the license so the only way you can drive is if you have a license from these people this is called fraud because it is fraud. It's a big ass scam. It's an illusion. That's why when niggas say, let it burn. Do you really mean that for multiple reasons? Do you know what you're saying? Do you know why you need to let it burn? This system is fucking evil and it's based off of lies and stealing from people. It's not based off of anything real. That's why the track on, we got to save the union. We got to save women. 
Save the West. Oh, really? Whitey, blacky, conservative blacky, you want to save this? Oh, please do. Let's continue to save the 21 companies that own our ass. Let's continue to do that. Thank you. Instagram thought for stop being a thought because now or for not being a thought. Excuse me. I need some water for now. You know, motherfuckers is is cool and chilling and shit thinking they doing something <laughs> until the heat get put on you until the screws get put to your brain and you looking like, oh, wait a minute. I just signed my own death warrant. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. You win. And what do we, <laughs> what do you win? You win destruction <laughs> and permanent perpetual slavery. That's what you win. Hooray. Yeah, save women so you could be the slave of Wells Fargo. Fix the West and get rid of the trannies so you can be a slave of Seed and Company. And J.P. Morgan. We have to save the West. Men of the West, unite! Like Lord of the Rings. Seed and Company is a dummy company even though it appears on all the bonds of all 50 states, general obligation bonds. Seed and Company has no officers or directors from the Hoover business site. Let's see. Look, check this out. Look, the Seed and Company founded in 1996, based in New York. Seed and Company, da, 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 subsidiary of NYSE Euronext Inc., Look, it's a subsidiary of NYSE or Next, or Euronext, excuse me. Let's see what they do. This is what Neuro, uh, Neuro, NYSE Euronext does. It says one of the world's largest exchange groups boasting trades totaling about 40% of the global cash equities volume. It operates esteemed exchanges in the U.S. and Europe. This is the bankers. We're pulling the face off the mask. Wait. Yeah, we go with that because <laughs> they were many faces. We're pulling uh, the, the, the wool off of the eyes right now, including the New York Stock Exchange, Exchange, Euronext, NYSE, New York Stock Exchange, Life, yeah, there's two Fs, and NYSE Amex, formerly American Stock Exchange. Of the American stock. I can't even talk. I'm fucking retarded. I think I actually do have brain damage, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. Because when I'm, I'm a, I'm a SB myself real quick. When I'm reading this shit, I don't stutter when I'm reading it. I read it smooth. But when I say it, there's something wrong. I think I have brain damage, bro. I'm not even going to lie to you. I need to go see somebody. <laughs> because I'm read. I don't have dyslexia. Because I can read it clearly. I can comprehend it. But when it comes out, it's fucked up. There's something wrong with my brain. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but see, there's something wrong with my brain, bro. Anyway, he said, the exchanges have about 80,000, 80,000, 800, hell, goddamn, look, see, here we go, 8,000, holy shit. I'm not, the, this is why I said I'm not a debater. I'm a terrible debater. I'm not a debater, bro. I'm not the, I should not be the leader of like public speaking because I'm not a public speaker. Cause I can't do it. <laughs> so I be fucking up too much. I can't do this shit. He said 8,000 listed companies and offer products and services such as cash equities, futures, options, swaps, carbon trading, clearing market data, uh, technology services, and more. After years of buying up smaller exchanges, NYSE Euronext agreed to be acquired by the Germany based Exchange operator, Deutsche Bank, in 2011. But the deal was blocked by European regulators. So we see what's going on. You're looking at the banksters now. So the NYSE, the New York Stock Exchange, Euronext Inc., deals with stocks, securities, and bonds. So if a so-called government entity is trading its institutions and collateral, that it acquires from its citizens unlawfully in for profit operations. What would that mean? It's called sedition because they're stealing from the American public unlawfully. 
There's no lawful stealing, but you get what I'm saying. They're unlawfully stealing from people. And they pass it off as legal and righteous. And they moralize you. That's why you need to question your morality. Why am I a tracon? Why do I believe in the rule of law? We're going to get to that soon. Why do I believe in the rule of law? Why do I believe that the police are never wrong? Why do I believe that uh, whatever this biblical SBE is? Why do I believe some of these things? Because you have been trained to believe these things. You've been trained to accept this. Let's continue. He said, check out the good old House of Representatives. Are they not a number one company being traded on a stock market? Watch this. Look, what is this? House of Representatives being traded on the fucking stock market. It's a fucking scam. This whole thing is a lie. Just like the, I'm going to get out of there. All, I, I'm a lot, <laughs> all I'm going to say is the Jesuits. All, right? all I'm going to say is the one word that needs to be said, the Jesuits. And uh, actually, I'll add this in here too. Uh, Scaliger, Joseph Scaliger, right? I'll add that too. Look, check this out. This is tripped out. For those who know, will know what I said. Yeah, exactly. After this, ask, why am I a cunt? <laughs> yeah. He said, the Supreme Court today governs legal fiction, legal fiction. Check this out through a process called selective incorporation. All 14th Amendment, all 14th Amendment. Guess what? All 14th Amendment. Look, 21. Ding, ding, ding. Ring a ding, ding. 21 company. The connection. You see that? Did you see that? They hitting the connection. Uh Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a second. Hold on. They fucking with the connection. Uh-oh. Excuse me. Burping the shit. Let me start over. Since you want to fuck with the connection. All 14th Amendment entities gain privileges granted by courts through selective incorporation. Selective incorporation deals with the issue of whether the Supreme Court can hold the states to guarantees in the Bill of Rights since the Bill of Rights was initially to was created initially to check the federal government from infringing on the rights of the state republics. Right. Remember, each state now is a company of the corporation or of a corporation of a 14th Amendment citizen, also known as an insular possession or federal enclave oh it gets deep the supreme court is a company look this is dunning and bradstreet credibility court check this out product services headquarters supreme court of the united states you can't make this shit up yeah 21 savage Uh oh yeah i don't think he runs shit a lot of people don't know what they're doing they just do shit or they're told to do little things and shit. And it just works out. He says, since the people have absolved their status as operating within a republic and by default are operating within democratic legal fiction, we got to save our democracy. We have to save our democracy. We need to save our democracy. We must save our democracy. Why do you think they say that all the time? It's conditioning. It's NLP, neuro linguistic programming. They got to get you to keep repeating it in your head. So you believe it. Then nothing can be done until the people resume their proper allegiance to the government, not an allegiance to a bond company through a birth certificate, which is evidence of a security somewhere in a J.P. Morgan pool party. The states have absolved their operation as republics based on the Constitution, yet no claim is being made by the people. This is why I told y'all it's not over. Stop saying it's all over. You have a chance. Most of y'all are too fucking lazy or stupid to do it. Not y'all in the chat. I mean, people in general. People in general are too lazy and stupid to do shit about this. But you can contest it. That's why the Constitution exists the way that it does. So the people can fight for their republic. <laughs> Come on, man. That's why I say y'all got to get active. Not no fucking conservative left, right shit. Fuck that. That's stupid. No, we talking about real politics, right? BGS ain't going to tell you this shit. 
Kevin Samuels will never tell you this shit. Your favorite alt media whore is never going to tell you this stuff. Why? Because they're stupid or they're agents. Oops. We are the only nationals on this land. This is Arna. We are the only nationals on this land making a legitimate claim. And that claim is that in order to solve the crisis in the United States of America, the status must be returned to the people. The nations, the nationals and citizens should be the primary beneficial owners and interest holders in all governmental institutions or else sedition and treason is an operation. They tried to tell you that Donald Trump was committing sedition in January 6th. Meanwhile, Kissinger and his buddies set this shit up going back 150 years. Starting in 150 years ago, actually before that, <laughs> you can go before that. Appreciate the cash app reality. I'm going to get to the chat. I got to get through this because it's a lot. That's what she said. Here is a display of Tom Corbett selling the people to Seed and Company, the depository trust company of Wells Fargo. Check this out. Look. $800 million. Look at this. I'm going to let y'all read this. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Right. Check this out. I'm going to let y'all read that on y'all. You could pause this. Right. Yeah, or Kevin Scam Sales. <laughs> Kevin Samwells. He's not going to tell you this shit. Let's check it again. Slave Masters. Here we go right here. Yeah, clickbait. <laughs> nah, <laughs> he said clickbait. <laughs> we did talk about that in the beginning, though, the topic. We went off the rails, though, as we usually do. Because it's connected to why it was Dexter Reed killed. Why are all these niggas running around as criminals and doing what they do? Why, why do these things happen? Because of this. This is why this stuff happens. That's why I never hear these dumbass conservatives mention any of this stuff. They don't know anything about this. Or they're sworn to secrecy. They don't tell anything about this. I never hear them talk about this stuff. They don't talk about the 21 companies. They talk about, oh, the Jews. The blacks. The Zionist even. Who? Where? When? Tell me more. Oh, I, I, I can't talk about that. Why not? Oh, they won't buy my coffee mugs. Uh, Roger Stone will cut off my check. Yeah. Clear Force will stop giving me money. Yeah. There you go. Anyway, so let's keep going. Look, check this out. How does your so-called government work? 21 slave master CEOs are primary dealers to the Federal Reserve open market operations and discount window. They purchase 95% of all government debt and thus they own the mortgages, the energy systems, the energy market, technology market, the military industrial complex, the prison industrial complex, the food industry, and your municipality, your jurisdiction. Your municipality in terms of county, borough, state, federal corporations. They own all this shit because they take the debt off of the United States. That's why they don't want the United States to be debt free. Oh, you know, debt. You know, China. There's a lot of things that go into this. This is why it was illegal in Islam to practice usury and debt slavery because the Romans were doing this to their people. You see? They tell you spookism, that Muhammad flew on a magic carpet and fucked a genie hoe. No, nigga. And he had sex with a, a genie woman. No, nigga. There's a political social aspect that people are just glossing over because they believe in spookism. They believe in spookism and shit they were taught instead of trying to grow. I had to learn all this shit. I, shit. I don't even know all this shit now. I had to learn this. Look, politicians get bought. Via GSEs, government sponsored enterprises. Let's keep going. HUD, Fannie Mac, Freddie Mac, or Freddie Mae, excuse me. Wait, fuck. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Jenny Mae. I don't even know who these people are. They just made that shit up. State and locals. They are allowed to have securities in these entities and get large pensions and stock portfolios for selling you to the slave masters through social security bonds, business licenses, driver's licenses, 
and municipal corps or corporations made to steal from you. Parking authorities, IRS, the police. <laughs> Hell no, the police, God damn it, the IRS, courts, debt collectors, etc. It's one big ass scam and everybody's scamming everybody. That's all this shit is in America. But it's the best chance we got. Because at least in America, you can scam back. <laughs> Try doing that in Uganda. See if the fuck they're going to chop your fucking foot off, bro. You have no recourse in these other countries. Right? Yeah, the IRS. Every Look, notice how... Look, let me, let me hit y'all with this. Take a brief pause. Pause? You said brief? Pause? You said pause? Pause? Let's do this real quick. Picture this. You're a hardworking businessman. You started your own small business and it's growing. Doesn't it seem like the IRS punishes you more than it does poor people? You're a middle class or upper middle class. You're running your business or two businesses and shit. Don't fall my business brothers in the chat. Doesn't it feel like the IRS is putting a squeeze on you even more than when you were poor? It seems like the more money you get, the more problems you have. There's a reason for that. They don't want you to become wealthy. They want to do everything to stop you from becoming wealthy and siphoning your money in parking tickets, fees, homeowners, whatever. For all this insurance, all the rest of the shit, it's all a big ass way. It's a big ass leech or several big leeches stuck to your body that are trying to pull the blood from your body. That's what this shit is. Yeah, parking enforcement. What an embarrassment. Exactly. Yes. They are slave officers, just like the police. Slave officers. We're in one open air plantation. The West. And shit, pretty much all of these cities and towns all over the world. All these governments is one big ass open air plantation. Where they're just juicing the people. Like batteries. Like the Matrix. <laughs> right? Let's continue. Look, give me back the land. Look. Check this out. This Now, this is Ali right here. This is what the Moors are missing. And the sovereign citizens are missing. Let me show you. Land issues in the business science of trust claims. Ali, I do apologize. I'm going to have to send him another cash out. I'm going to send him $100 this time. Last time I sent 50 I'm going to have to send 100 Because, <laughs> uh, you know, we going in right now. I'm going to send that nigga some money for this. Appreciate the cash apps that y'all do give. I'm going to have to just send it to him. You know, because I'm stealing. I'm not stealing this shit, but I'm using it without proper contact with the proper channels. <laughs> he said, the short part of the material details, da, da, da. here are the steps. You must have an aboriginal nationality. Why? Because there are only two types of political jurisdictions, statuses, on this land. They're A, aboriginal government. In these treaties that the U.S. signed with these people. Oh, this tribe just disappeared. No, they became Negroes. And they were denationalized. Genocided. Their culture was stolen. Where's your black culture? We have remnants of it, but we don't have everything because it was taken from us. Over time, people forget. They don't pass things on. If they're in a constant state of stress, how are they supposed to talk about the good things that they've done? They can only remember the bad. All this stuff coincides to where we at now as black people in America. And then you got other people causing more stress. So you're constantly stressed. You're born in stress and you die in stress. Imagine that lifestyle. It's hell on earth. Literally. That's why some people say earth is hell. Right. So there you are. There's only two, not three, two types of government, political jurisdictions that work in America or in the landmass of America. Aboriginal government because of the treaties and two, the United States and United States of America, all other business operations, religious corporations like the Moors, the Nuwapians, whatever the, for the Hebrews or associations or institutionally private entities or government ran entities fall up under one of the two. So everything boils down to ABO government or United States government. There's only two options. 
Red or blue pill? Ooh, got y'all with that, huh? Anyway, let's keep going. Without an aboriginal nationality for the so-called Negro in America and its federal enclaves, will have primary trustee execution ability interest in your rights and property via its 21 primary dealers at the Fed discount window bondholders. No one owns land. Entities act as trustees over their operations on the land. No operations, no trust, no execution of interest in the land. Each state of the USA tells you that they are trustees over the resources for use by its citizens. Since we know that these entities, states, are companies and corporations, then let's think business minded and ask ourselves, where are their interests? There you go. So this is 3A in their resident citizens. Excuse me, that's you. 3B in all contracts that their resident citizen subjects make with the state as trustee for bondholders. C. So this is 3C. In all businesses, they are the trustee or they the trustee register for their resident citizen subjects. Then 3D, all government sponsored enterprises. Let's continue. We got more. That's why we're we going to take a slow walk down the beach. <laughs> yeah. And see the stars. Oh, God. Let's continue with the building of our plebiscite. And what they did was they took this word, just like Hotep, and turned it into a pejorative. In other words, a negative word, a bad word. Plebiscite babble. Plebiscite. But Tariq Nasheed, what is the FBA? Where do the FBA operate? Oh, it's a lineage. How are you supposed to actionalize that? How, or actualize, excuse me. Tariq Nasheed, how are you supposed to capitalize on FBA? By getting money from the government? So you're saying you submit to the United States. That's your master. Tariq is not advocating for no aboriginal government building. That's why, look, Tariq is step one. You need to rise beyond step one. And most people are too dumb to do that. So fuck them. Survival of the fittest. Anyway, they turn that word plebiscite into a negative word, and it's not. You get niggas like Polite and all the other scammers and charlatans running around here doing what they do. And they ruin and cheapen movements. This is why it's critical. I do stress that. This is why it's critical for you to delineate and distinguish yourself from weirdos. Because they will fuck up what you're doing. And they will take your terminology and flip it. Like woke. Like glizzy. See how I circle back? <laughs> They'll take it and fuck it up. It meant gun. Now it means dicks. Plebiscite meant government. Now it means scammer. Scam talk. You see how they whittle your morality, your understanding down? They did it to me too. I'm not blameless in these transgressions that I'm lead, uh, leading y'all through. <clears throat> Let me get some more tea. I got a lot of comments to read. <laughs> I like to read y'all comments. Anyway, I'll just read it again. This is number four. With the building of our plebiscite for nationality via removing the genocide and denationalization, we first return our interest in ourselves back over to our autonomous body politic. Demoralization is the first step to denationalization. And when you're denationalized, you're dehumanized. Oh, that's a bar. He said the Aboriginal Republic of North America, that's ARNA. That's why I said I want to join them. If they don't let me, I'll make my own. We have 12 ministries. Look, they have, this is an actual government. This is not some niggas in the woods dancing around a fire. This is an actual government. It's fledgling. It's new. It's only around, been around since 2006. It's new. They're just getting a stride. And God bless them. That's why I infinitely respect Ali Muhammad. I don't give a fuck what none of y'all niggas say. I don't agree with everything he says, but I infinitely respect him. If you want to say a master teacher, Ali is my master teacher. I'll say that on record. Who's telling you this shit? 
BGS? <laughs> Who's telling you this shit? Uh, and I don't want to take shots at them, but like Coach Greg Adams, are they telling you? Is Tribe of Men, Legion of Men telling you about this shit? No. Y'all got to watch who you listen to. The messenger, <laughs> the messenger <laughs> does matter. And the message matters, right? Anyway, let's continue. He said, all businesses coming from our jurisdiction are owned by the aboriginals who have 100% ownership interest. Our work in the group ARNA is to protect these assets or offsets. In the international contracts, da, 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 right? We must become holders of the contracts and apply interest through exempting securitization and thus removing unlawful liability. So let's break that down. What does this mean? They are becoming primary actors in the contract law and stopping the people from fucking up their contracts. You know what I'm saying? And what they're doing, their business. I paraphrased it. Six, based on the Dawes rules, there are 317,000 aboriginals who were counted on the federal census. Each individual was given 160 acres worth of land. Our contention is that 50 million acres of land were stolen from those who held land in trust by the United States. I have done thousands of genealogy reports. This is Ali talking for Aboriginal blacks and have a 95 percent and 95 percent of the time have found an ancestor on the Dawes roll. One, a couple of my ancestors were on the Dawes roll. Let's continue. Most of the land was illegally confiscated. And the evidence is that from 1887 to 1920, almost all of the land was lost via the lynching period and political genocide of the aboriginals, so-called Negroes. Arna's work is to identify these lands and cite whether the transfers were lawful. Were they where, where they were, excuse me, not where they were not. We will make up. Hold up. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Let me read that again. <clears throat> Where they were not, we will make up the appropriate claims. Those claims can be made on the actual beneficiaries of the current holders through abstract of title. Since all land was allocated by patent and warranty, any warranty deeds held by any entities will be subject to the patents. Thus, the genealogy searches are one of the keys to regain the land. The other issue is is the gaining of interest in land areas as an autonomous aboriginal government. We have already executed, check this, we have already executed, they've done this already, executed and sampled this process in perfect harmony with all law. And again, our challenge is to get aboriginals busy under a new paradigm. The United States and the United States of America acquired all of the interest in lands via treaties and or conquest. Below, we see a portfolio of how lands were acquired. All of the execution of gaining the land shown here was through setting up commercial entities called states, counties, municipalities, parishes, and boroughs. This is based off of the British system of an alderman, the parishes, the borough. These are Anglo-Saxon concepts, right? Let's continue. Aboriginals have the same ability. In rule number one, uh, rule number one in commerce, in America, everything is for sale. So you can buy your freedom. Just like they let you buy it in slavery, you can buy it today. Let's see. Look, these are the land acquisitions. And this one is 1763. Florida was in 1819 or East Florida. West Florida, 1819. 1819 with a uh, Spanish, um, what is this shit called? part of Louisiana, Texas annexation, 1845, Gastodon purchase, 1853, Alaska, 1867, Mexican secession, 1848, Oregon territory, 1846. And there were people living here. Like when they said, oh, well, the, the French own this place, Louisiana purchase. They didn't actually own it, own it. They own the rights to it, if that makes sense. It's like this. 
I got a stick that I put in the ground. I put it in the ground. But somebody comes along and says, hey, I like that stick. I'm going to go to my patent office and say, I made that stick and I put it in the ground. I got the rights to it. I wasn't informed of this, but he now has legal documentation that proves that he owns the stick and the ground and the areas at. And I have to be like, fuck, because I have no representation. I can't fight him and he can back it up because his legal system has big guns and big tanks. I don't have shit <laughs> except the big brain. <laughs> and I got to figure out how to fucking fix that. Right. That's a problem. That's what happened to us. What happened was they destroyed, and this didn't happen a planned effort from the beginning. It was over time, opportunities rose and they took them, right? Niggas' kingdoms started falling down, and it took a while to do that, but the kingdoms were weak, the tribes were weak, they came in, did what they did. I'm out of there, though. Time for the fuckery. Time for the fuckery. All right, y'all. Let's go over here. I'm out of there. All right. He said, our reaction to me stuttering. <laughs> Let's play this. This is for the police. The fucking useless eaters that think they're better than us, even though they're in the same boat. <laughs> what did you say, nigga? Yeah, that's me. Recruits, you might remember me from the Rodney King proceedings. As a police officer, my oath is to provide service and safety to the solid citizens of the city. Well, mine is say it, don't spray it. Ooh, a smart ass. Well, if I had nine of LA's finest holding taser guns and wielding billy clubs behind me, I'd fight you right now. But I'm kind of busy. So, who's here today? You must be Stephen Simmons. <laughs> and you, you'd be Stan S Smith. <laughs> and I take it you're Sissy Spacek from Sarasota Strange Sit. <laughs> hey, who's been messing with my list? <laughs> Was it you, Mr. Prankster? No, sir. What's the matter, sassafras? Are you scared? Are you frightened? Are you nervous? You're sweating like a suckling sow on a sizzling spit! What are you smirking at, smarty pants? Hmm? Ladies and gentlemen, you have to be very tough to be a police officer. Okay, panty waist, take a shot at your old Sarge. That's a good one. Now, let me try. <laughs> this brings us to lesson number one. Get to know your weapon, but don't ever use it recklessly. Can you say recklessly? Recklessly! recklessly. <laughs> Excellent. Lesson number two. Police officers have to remember events exactly as they happen. This is a suspect. And this is a can of mints. <laughs> now, what did you see? You use excessive force. No, this is excessive force. <laughs> Now, what did you see? Police brutality. I think somebody needs to get their eyes checked. Yeah. Vision's getting a little blurry, isn't it? Read the bottom line! <laughs> and what did you see, son? Uh, yeah, it looked like he was on PCP, then he attacked you, right? And you just acted like you were supposed to. Hey, kid, are you registered for jury duty? <laughs> Incidentally, remember that word, PCP. It stands for Pounds Crook Persistently. Can you say persistently? 
Persistently. Persistently. Sounds like we're in sync. Now, for lesson number three, you must identify the enemy instantly. That's why we set up this simulation. Curtain! <laughs> Say you're in a seedy part of the city. When you stumble upon several silly suspects secretly slipping across the street. <laughs> As a police officer, you must make split-second decisions separating the innocent from the despicable. <laughs> ready on the right, ready on the left, ready on the firing line. All right, students, select the most dangerous suspect. No, 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 he's no threat. Hold your fire. What about him? Not this time. Believe me, there's a much bigger threat to the men in blue. Jim, kill the bastard with the video camera! Get him! He is shooting like this! You're not gonna survive! Hold your fire! Take him out and you can waste everybody else at your own leisure. Congratulations, students. You've passed the course. But now it's time to recite the policeman's oath. Now, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, I, state your name, state your name, <laughs> promise to support a system and successfully strip suspicious suspects with excessive force. <laughs> Suffering suck a cash. Suffering suck a cash. Hey, what's this? What do you think you're doing? You think you can just come in here and film police officers training? Is that it? This is top secret, mister. I'm gonna have to give you a little warning. Now that's accurate. That's highly accurate. That's actually real. Anyway, let's go to more fuckery real quick. Let's go to some more fuckery. Here we go. That was real though. That was definitely a real thing. So this for truism? Who is this? Ha. Ha ha ha. Uh-oh, Hannibal on BS. This is he said this is for truism. There you go. <laughs> Yikes. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to more clownery. Uh, what was I going to talk about? Should I do the 4B? Let's do the 4B. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go to the 4B. Dun, 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 dun. The 4B movement. I bet. So this this the Nigerian Prager you bitch. Let's get to it. The 4B movement. The 4B movement. The 4B movement. Shout out to the 4B movement. Be alone. In your movement. So a new feminist movement is taking root here in the United States and it came out of Korea. It's known as the 4B movement where women are saying no to four things. Dating men, having sex with men, marrying men, and having children with them. Let's talk about it. Yeah, you better. Yeah, you better. Guys, before we get into today's video, please like and subscribe. The future of the human race apparently may depend on it. Let's talk about the 4B movement. Now, as I said at the top of this video, this is a movement that came out of South Korea that apparently women are adhering to. And they're adhering to the idea of saying four no's, again, to dating men, having sex with them, marrying them, and having children with them. Now, all of these four no's have Korean words that start with the letter B, and that's where we get the 4B movement. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss 
past the 4B movement talk about how big it actually is in South Korea, but apparently a lot of American women are getting the impression that this is a movement that is sweeping the nation and they want it to take root here in the United States. Let's hear from some American women on TikTok who are deciding to take up the 4B movement so that they can explain it to you themselves. I'm so glad you asked. The 4B movement is a movement in South Korea right now where the misogyny and sexism is so bad that South Korean women have decided to opt out of dealing with men entirely. That is not a joke. That is not an exaggeration. They are not dating men. They are not marrying men. They are not having children with men. They're not even sleeping with men anymore. And it's called the 4B movement because the Korean words for those four things all start with the letter B. This kind of first started happening around 2016 when Kim Ji Young, born 1982, a novel came out. And it is a fictional book about a Korean every woman and all of the misogyny and sexism that she's experienced from literally being a child all the way to her being an adult suffering with postpartum depression after having her child. Now, this book became a runaway bestseller among South Korean women because they were like, she's just like me for real. And that's kind of when it started cooking, right? Now, the movement officially got its name in 2019. Why does a lesbian care about what men and women do? This is why certain people should be disqualified. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, these are fem cells. The fem cell revolution. <laughs> like, bro, why is a dirty, disgusting lesbian whore talking about men and relationships with men and all that? <sighs> I got to find that woman who taught Princella because I want to play her on one of these streams, man the 4B for 4 bullshit. But look, I support it. I fully support the 4B movement. I think we need more of it. I think we need more abortions. And I am not bullshit. I'm not joking. I'm dead ass here. We need more abortions. We need more 4B. Women just need to stop having sex with men. Because AZ Tech pointed something out. Depopulation. But guess why I say that? Because I believe these people... I can't even say that live on there. I think they should go bye-bye, the way of the dinosaur. How do you do that? You have to cut their population down. I agree with Kissinger. Hashtag Kissinger was right. Kissinger was so right, it's not even funny. <laughs> Kissinger was right. I agree. I think we should have abortion. In fact, you should make abortion legal even when uh, the baby is a... Uh, like, I don't know, eight months, nine months. You should make it legal. In fact, make it mandatory unless you opt out. That's what, yeah, let's do that. Feminist time. My chair is tweaking. We should, we should make in America abortion legal unless you opt out or it's mandatory unless you opt out. You have to write a letter to your state and opt out. We should also... Promote the 4B movement so that all women can support it unless they opt out. Let's continue. It's just been going ever and since. And I am not joking. I'm not kidding. I am dead serious. Call me what you want, and I'll tell you why I have this rationale in a minute. It's so successful, in fact, that now South Korea has one of the lowest birth rates in the world. The number of deaths in South Korea outnumber the number of births in South Korea. There you go. And she's happy about that. That's why I said that. You need to let these people die out. They are degenerate. They are beyond saving. You need to let them die out. Boom. Should have rolled down the inside of their fat whore mother's leg. There you go. Boom. That's why I said that. No, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm dead serious. I am dead serious. I'm not being sarcastic at all. I'm dead serious. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, New. I'm with you, dog. <laughs> I'm with you, big dog. This is, a, this is a message from our sponsor real quick. Taking a little break, a little 20-second break. Be back to your kind. I have been battling your kind for thousands of years. I have taught triumph long ago. But what if I tortured Sisyphus? I cannot win. Ever. What a cruel joke. Am I doomed to struggle with such filth until the end of time? Perhaps my newfound power can show me the answer. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Room. 
Vroom. 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 That's the way they got to go. Should have rolled down the inside of a fat mother's leg. You hear me? Yeah, you hear me? Where's the 4B? Where is it? I missed it. Fuck. Where's the 4B? Ooh, nope. Nope. Here. Power. No, that's not it. All right, he said, yeah, he said, sounds harsh, but to be honest, only exactly. And that's how it should be, AZ Tech. All these degenerate masses of mewling retards, let them die. Let them kill themselves. Metaphorically, YouTube, in a hypothetical sense, right? Hypothetically, YouTube. Let them burn out. They're going to burn themselves out, man. Let them burn out. All the trad con niggas, y'all going to wisen up one day. We got to save civilization. No. No, no, we don't. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why in a second. Of Korea. And it's hilarious because all the men and the government are like, oh my God, what do we do? We, they, they, they don't want to like talk to us. They don't want to date us. They don't want, what do we do? Like everything's in shambles. We don't know what to do. When South Korean women have been very clear from day one, they're like, hey, either you get your act together or we are literally eliminating all of this. Like we are shutting it down. So that's the 4B movement and why I'm so obsessed with it and why I think we should have the 4B movement everywhere. Thanks for listening. Now that video has nearly 500. I agree 100%. We should have it everywhere. We should. We should have it. The 4B movement should be all across the world in every country, every town, all that. In fact, we need to marry the 4B movement with the male version of the 4B movement, right? Get out of there, Savant. Get out of there. Stay out of there, bro. Stay out of there. He said, I don't think Korean men are too worried. Nah, because guess what they're doing? Let me show you something. Let me show you. See, this is why I will agree with these niggas. Let me show you something real quick. Let me show you something. This is what Korean men are doing. Look. Look, this is what Korean men are going and turning into passport bros. They're going to Japan and having babies with the Japs and going to China and having babies with the Chinese women. The Korean men are, are turning into passport bros. <laughs> Save yourself, Asian man. That's what they're doing. And the women are, you know, see, indifference, man. The Korean dudes who are not in sales don't care, bro. Look at what they're doing. The celebrities are doing it. The man on the street do it. Let them die, man. Fuck it. Let them die. Shit. Let the women starve themselves out. They gonna, hey, they gonna cave. Okay? This this is the battle. This is the real battle of wills. It's the real battle of wills. Are you strong enough to resist the 4B movement? To wait it out? <laughs> they're turning to passport bros, man. Crazy, man. Yeah, they they're in Africa. They're in America. They're messing with other races. They're doing their thing. They're messing with other Asians. They out there, right? Do you have the strength to practice indifference? <laughs> That's the question. Because they're doing it. Uh oh. Exploring their options, right? Uh oh. Let me get out of there. Black men take notes that is trying to save Keisha due to Korean. This is when I will agree with the passport niggas and the SYSBM niggas, right? Go where you, you know, go where you can go. Okay? But let's continue. You hear me? If a hoe don't want to give me sex, nigga, I'll find someone who does. I'll find a bitch who does, bro. I'll find a broad who does want to give me sex. Okay? I'm not tripping. Be like the Korean. 160,000 likes on it, mostly from American people. Let's read a few of the comments. Let's take the 4B movement worldwide. That's funny. I've been doing the 4B movement all my life without knowing, hee hee. So you get the gist of the picture that's being painted here. The 4B movement is sweeping South Korea because of misogyny and sexism. And because of the 4B movement, the South Korean birth rate is at a record low. We're going to talk a little later on about the fact that that might not even be the case, but it doesn't really matter because TikTok and social media has picked up the narrative and now American modern day feminists are running with it. This video says 4B movement has arrived in the US and I'm here for it. How do y'all feel about it? He hates you. They hate us. Men do not like us. Um, be alone. 
that's really the only other option. Just be alone, look in the mirror, sit with yourself, cry, have an ego death, and then get really hot, get a bunch of hobbies, be extremely successful, and write a fucking book or something. Just be alone. Oh my God. It is so much better than being with someone who hates your ass. Or here's a novel. Uh-oh. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Look, I don't even think that uh, we really hate each other like that, the sexes. But let's just say that she's right. Does that sound familiar? Well, what did she say? Get successful, do your thing. It sounds like indifference. Oops, my bad. Even though it's from a twisted feminist way, it's still coming back to that point. It's indifference, bro. Hey, and like Carmen just said in the chat, men love her. This chat is, uh, not this chat, but YouTube, the niggas that be simping over her are evidence for that, right? But and it's an avatar. But this is what I'm saying. The women who will fuck with you will fuck with you. And they will reject the 4B, even if they have nefarious intentions. So that's how you automatically weed these people out. That's why I'm all for it. Let them weed themselves out. I don't ever want to be around a woman like this. This one. Or this one. I don't want to be around either of these hoes. Let them be over there weird. Let them be over there. I'm not mad at them that they don't want a man. Why does every woman need to have a man? Every woman need to have a husband. If they don't want to do it, let them die out. Fuck them. Let their genetic lineage die. Good. Good riddance. That's what I got to say. <laughs> you know, forget them. Those who... Damn. See? He said, uh, bruh, this is all cap. These hoes be crying. They always do. These videos crack me up. I've seen these dumb connection. They're fucking with the connection. Yeah. 4B. That's my internet provider. Yeah. I say, man, let them, let them burn out, man. If they don't want to fuck with me, they don't want no kids. I'm fine with that. Cool. Keep living in your apartment. I'm not even mad. I'm not trying to throw a red pill jab at them. Like, Hey bitch, you're going to die. You're going to be alone. You know, yeah, they took the 5G, man, with him. He said, I don't care about trying to smash a DM card. I'm telling you, bro, this is internet shit. But I'm just saying, a lot of niggas do. But I'm just saying. Yeah, my ISP went its own way. But I'm just saying, right? She's just an example. I just use her. You could take any woman in these chats or whatever. Like beach or whatever. He said, that's an incel jab. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, I don't care. That's why I wasn't trying to speak from that perspective. Oh, well, yeah, you're going to die alone. Just let them do what they're going to do. Fuck it. Who cares? Forget about it. Who cares? If she wants to do what she want to do, I don't care, bro. The thing is, though, this is why it goes back to this conversation right here. It goes back to this conversation. I don't care what happens. Where is it? I don't care what happens here. I care what happens here. I will SBE here. Where is it? Wait, hold on. Give me a second. I don't care what happens here. I don't... Wait, let me take this off the screen. I don't give a fuck about what happens here in the highlighted section, but I do care what happens here because I have control over this. I don't have any control over this, but I have control over this. So I will SBE in this right here. I will SBE in this. I don't care. Don't care. But in this. Oh, you better believe I care. <laughs> I definitely care. All right. That's the only place I SBE. Otherwise, I don't give a damn. Let's continue. Right. He said to focus on my skill set. And gaining real estate knowledge. I always had situationships. Same here. But I don't have, because I don't have time. I could always attract, but couldn't keep because I can't dedicate all my time to her. Same here. Got the same thing going on. He said the empire, more importantly, the empire is more important than the batch. Uh, that's why I'm 10 toes down on building internationally. Once I have it set, I can basically build a bitch whenever I want. There you go. And write a fucking book or something. Just be alone. Oops. Oh my God. It is so much better than being with someone who f 
hates your ass. Or here's a novel idea. Maybe find a man who doesn't hate you and date that man. They do exist, even though you're not allowed to say not all men these days here in the United States. But I digress. Let's watch some more. It's so crazy that I am just now finding out what the 4B movement is because me and the other women in my- uh Oh, she got a crystal. She got a crystal on her neck. Uh-oh. See? She got a crystal and she got another racial woman's hair on her head. Look, she got a crystal. The other one had a bun looking raggedy. It's a sign. It's a sign. Uh-oh. My life, we've been on that. We've been on the 4B movement. We've been on the 4C movement. What is you talking about? So I think that the 4B movement, if it's not already evident, it's going to make its way to the United States. It's very interesting. The men are already begging. Women are waking up in the droves, in the hundreds. I see more liberating content for women. The collective consciousness is at its all time high and it's only gonna keep growing. Like that 4B movement is making its way pretty soon. And ladies, we gotta strategize, okay? I'm making a Twitch to strategize because Men begging now, but they're gonna try to do more drastic things as they get tired. I'll be the first to say I would love to be in a strategy meeting for the 4B movement because I have no idea what the f that means. And it's interesting that a lot of the women who are making these videos are sort of functioning from the assumption that women are already perfect. We are already the best people that we can be, and it really is that the problem and the issues are just men. They Damn are the right. The problem is men. Yeah, she's right on that. The problem is men. Y'all cannot let this bitch alone. Y'all can't let her alone, bro. You always got to control what she doing in a system that you don't even control like I just broke down. Now, if you were in a government that you ran, yeah, you control everything that goes on there because she chose to be there unless you kidnapped the bitch, which I don't recommend. So let me break down my framework. In a government that you own and control, I absolutely, <clears throat> excuse me, I absolutely say that you should SBE. Hell yeah. But you don't own and control this government. He said, I'm hard on the hoes. Exactly. Hell yeah. Oh, God. Like, bro, you know, that's why it's like, dude, dudes are the problem because they care too much about the wrong women and the wrong things in the wrong environment and in the wrong way. That's the problem. It's not even women. These women are being led around by elite level men, as AM1 says, trying to bully us out of our freedom and shit. They're being led around by these people, right? That's not even an issue. It's men versus males is the real problem. When a man stands on his shit, when he don't give a fuck about these dumbass cunts and he'll pump them and dump them and shit, he has the ultimate keys to the kingdom. Intelligently, by the way. When he's doing what he do on his own square, intelligent with it, nothing can stop him. Not a woman, not another man. None of that shit. God himself can't stop this dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it is what it is, man. He said they taking this seriously. Why do you think SBE exists? You Bible thump and moral high ground niggas care too. Yes, they do. He said, nah, it's the hoes, bro. Don't let them goofy hoes escape the, out the back window. Nah, they're not escaping. It's men. I'm telling you it's men, bro. And niggas gonna call me a male feminist or whatever, but nah, that's not the case. Far from it. It's I have a complex way of thinking that breaks outside of niggas' boxes that they put themselves in, right? I don't disagree, Frankie. I do not disagree with that last point you made. But it's why I said it's men. Because who allowed the women to get here in the first place? Oh, you allowed me? Yes. Yes, we allowed you. Because we reward, uh, excuse me, we reward, excuse me, what the fuck? I don't know. I said re reward. We reward good behavior and we reward bad behavior. We do that. And that sends mixed signals. Yeah, men versus males. It sends mixed signals and that causes problems, right? Because you're sending mixed signals. You're telling her, okay, it's okay to be a hoe. It's okay to do this. Yeah, it's cool. Just give me some pussy. Or here, let me give you some money so you can get up off that pussy and give it to me. What is that? What is that? That's unfreedom. Y'all champions for unfreedom. <laughs> Don't even realize what's going on. 
Don't even realize it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, nigga? Parents on MTV's TRL. <laughs> That's facts. He said, but them hoes raised their sons to be. Well, whose fault is that, though, Frankie? How come they're not being raised by their father? See? Why are the boys not being raised by their daddy? Are we back? Are we back? Okay. How come they can do this shit, but these niggas can't do it? Yeah, I'm going to add that to the war chest. Yeah, and he said, why dudes having babies by weak bitches is the real question. Yes, that's the real question. Are we lying to ourselves? Correct. That's what I'm saying. I'm just asking you questions, man. I ain't hating. I'm just asking questions, right? He said, if studs can handle, can't handle a period time, a period of time without Johnson, these chicks don't stand a chance. But see, that's all infringed upon men. Are we willing to hold out and stand on our 10 toes and let the chicks come to us from a position of power where we're on a position of power? If you're not willing to do that, you are a part of the problem. If you're not willing to move from a position of power, nah. Like, bro, I will make a bitch beg to get the dick before I submit to her. I'm not submitting to a woman. I'll make her beg for it. Literally. Before I even entertain her grandiosity, I'll make her beg for it. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. He said men will still smash so-called 4B women. And that's the problem. Men will still smash the 4B bras. He said, got to keep the same energy. If men insist on saying we men and building the world, yeah, keep that energy. Right? It's facts, man. Got to ask these questions. Yeah, father's presence is key. AZ got his kid. Right? You got your son, right? There you go. How did you do it? He said, I was put on a mala not too long ago. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of her. She a Prager U chick with that conservative stuff. Right? Anyway, um, he said they can get smashed, but they're donezo. Yeah, let them be donezo. In fact, help them. Help them be donezo. He said they can't handle the discipline pill. You're right, and that's the problem. That's why I said it's men. The men cannot be disciplined enough to not give in to the broad. Like I said, I'll make a beg. All them chicks that were trying to bully me... <laughs> They were trying to bully me into giving them the Johnson in some weird gender role flipping shit. And I was like, no. And then I made them submit. I literally watched this one girl. I watched a hood rat turn into a housewife. I literally watched it. Watched it with my own eyes. I made her do that because I said, no, that's all I had to do. She used to be loud and. And I'm using hyperbole, but you, she used to be loud, aggressive, obnoxious. Anytime she came around me, she start quieting down because I said, no, that's all it is, bro. Yeah, I, I ran off the block. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. All I said was, no, I'm not fucking with you. No, I don't like you. That's all I had to do. And she was hurt by that. She was hurt. A lot of these, because the narcs never grow up. So these are little kids, man. That's why they had little baby emotions, right? That's why I show y'all saying Vagnet. Yes, 99% of dudes turn, or 98% of dudes turn hoes in a housewife. Yes, correct. But I'm saying in the sense of, without the hyperbole, I'm saying that I made her submissive, quote unquote, because I said no. That's all I needed to do. I didn't need to do anything else. I just said, no, I'm not fucking with you. I don't like what you do. You don't like what I do? What do you mean, Shango? Fuck you, nigga. I said, okay. And I wouldn't engage. And every time, she'd be feeling on me, trying to get me to take her in the, the car and do some things. I'm like, bro, I said, hey, I'm not fucking with you. You too loud and obnoxious. Yeah, did you try the SBE? Maybe that'll work. No. <laughs> I actually did SBE her at first, right? I SBE'd her at first, but I did it unintentionally, right? Yeah, then she yelled, give me that dick, nigga. Oh, God, that's crazy, man. <laughs> he said, looks, pill, willpower, pill, discipline, pill are not the management. Correct. 
Yes, you're right. They're not in the Manosphere Molly bag, correct, in the medicine cabinet. He said, yeah, she done so while swallowing the cum so. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> said, it's not about dudes smashing the four B chicks. Uh-oh. He said, I don't like what you do. You're a fucking whore. That's pretty much what I told her. And guess what? She was all on me, dog. She was thirsty. Thirsty as hell. I made her break herself. Like, low-key, what I'm saying is men got to tap into their incubus mode just a little bit. I was talking with my brother Real Talk about this shit. Tap into the incubus mode just a little bit. And then use that to your advantage. Just a smidgen. Tap into that incubus, that male succubus, that male uh, seduction. Tap into that just a little bit. Not too much because it, it turns weird. Just a little bit. And use indifference and no. And stoicism. And you got it. Simple. Like half the time, bro, when I walk into a place, yeah, it requires sexual discipline, which most niggas don't have. That's why my homie got three kids by a fat Mexican. <laughs> well, she ain't that fat, but she is kind of fat. But yeah, he got three kids. One is a, a newborn, pretty much. The other two are like getting into middle school. No, they're not. They're grade schoolers, right? Uh, yeah, they ain't that old. <laughs> Cause he ain't had no dick discipline. He was pussy crazy, and that's what happened. When we when we was coming up, this nigga had a girl every week. Every week, this nigga had a girl. And I'm like, okay. And he he didn't get no fuck. He just fuck anything. So when niggas say, yeah, he got a gordita. When niggas say, hey, uh, niggas will fuck anything, they do. Niggas definitely do. So this nigga had a girl every week. Some of them was good looking. Some of them was busted. But he had a bitch every week. And I'd be like, yo, you got a bitch every week. And he'd be like, yeah, I do. Because I love pussy. I'm like, I love it too, but not that much. Shell <laughs> God. Like, not that much to risk my freedom with some bitch for 18 years. No, nigga. And he was rawing them all the time. Because he'd tell me about what he was doing, you know. Not on some explicit shit, but he'd be like, yeah, bro, I don't, I, I don't get no fuck. I just do whatever. And I'm like, okay. See him a couple of years later, he got like three kids <laughs> with a, a homely, humble bundle Mexican. She done blew up, got a gut. No ass. I'm like, okay, all right, bet. You got trapped. He was skeeting without discipline. He trapped himself. Did she steal his uh, seed? Did she uh, sperm jack him? Like Fantastic said, did she sperm jack him? No. He did it to himself. What happens after you trust a woman is your fault. Like Ty said, bro, he right. He said, no ass. Ah, oh, man, because he, he didn't really give a fuck about that shit. He's one of them uh, Caribbean niggas, like y'all niggas. He said, yeah, bro, I don't give a fuck. I let, yeah. All you got to do, yeah, a smidgen, cold word for fart. Exactly. You got to fart on these hoes, too. That's another thing. I'm going to get out of there. That's too advanced. He said, oh, come on, bro. That's that game pill shit. Motherfuckers don't want to hear that, bro. Just easy becoming a high-value trick. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, be a high-value trick instead, yeah. See where that gets you. Then get some Red Bull and Money World. Ones who bear the burden of everything that's wrong within the dating sphere right now, and we have no accountability to be taken. And if men are so terrible and they're truly everything that's wrong. Let me run that back. Let me run that back. And are somehow going to resort to violence if the 4B movement becomes big enough in the United States. But what man is going to come chasing after a modern day feminist who does not want him? I guess we'll see. All right, next. Quite a few do. Yeah, shout out to Red Bull. Yeah, she pandering like a motherfucker. She know that's bullshit. A bunch of these dudes do. These conservative guys do it. Bullshit. That's horse shit, man. Yeah, Courtney Michelle's African cousin. Yeah. He says, speaking of Red Bull, why <laughs> Why did I buy one? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that money would last. Yeah, exactly. Being a shine bone. Seriously, I have an honest question. Did all of us become celibate like a year and a half ago, two years ago? I did a year and a half ago. Like, I don't even care. Just give it six months and you're just like, what? Oh, ew. Ew. And then like, yeah, your health is much better. Your sleep is much better. Your life is much more peaceful. So who's already been doing the 4B movement? 
But yeah, I haven't dated it at all. My life has, this has been the best year of my life. Good. See, now y'all gonna say I'm being an incel right now. But this is what happens. The only reason she can get away with this shit is because they're standing on the backs of dudes. Because dudes, quote unquote, build society, protect and provide. Well, you provided a, a safety net for these hoes. That's why she can speak on this. Yeah, the married women are celibate too. Hey, yo, there's something wrong with my internet, man. Yeah, I need to SB my Wi-Fi. I'm going to have to drop. I'm going to have to <laughs> come back and do this again. There's something wrong with my internet. But let me make this last point. So with this woman on the screen, the only reason she can get away with that is because men have built up a system that will protect and provide for her. Once that shit goes away, this can't work. It don't work. You know, and we already know that. But the SBE guys, they act like that's right now. Yeah, we were fine on StreamYard. I don't know what's going on right now. But, yeah. So, anyway, I got to end this, though. So, y'all be easy. Ain't, ain't this that eight? Nah, that's a different one. There's one of these Asian hoes that she be talking crazy about men, bro. <laughs> one of these Asian bitches. But, yeah, let the 4B shit keep going. We're going to have to come back to this topic and do four hours for four Bs, four bitches. Four bitches, four hours. Since we only did two hours, I'm going to show you two bitches. Here you go. Let's do some Asian hoes. Let's do some Asian bitches real quick. No, I don't like those. Man, Asian bitches ain't got no ass, bro. Jesus Christ. Look at these whores. Man, these some fucking whores, bro. Look at this whore. Uh, I'll just show you two bitches, fuck it. I'll show you this. Okay, I got one Asian. This ain't no Asian. These bitches be showing titties and shit. I'm trying to find a thick Asian. I can't find it now. Okay, what about this bitch? Let's do this. All right, so Thai and Cambodian chick. All right. All right, so let's show you. Since it's two hours, we're doing a 4B movement. I'm going to split it up. You feel me? 4B. So we're doing 2B. So I'm going to show you two bitches. Here we go. This is one bitch. This is one Asian bitch with no ass. That I know y'all niggas fuck with this. This skinny no ass bitch. I know y'all fuck with that shit. Right? He said fish mouth on, uh, on the, you talking about the Cambodian hoes? This little bitch ain't got no ass, bro. Her shit is non-existent. This what y'all niggas fuck with. This skinny Asian hoe. There you go. That's one bitch. Now we gonna, we gonna go to the second bitch. Since we did a 4B movement. Yeah, that's truism's type. That's Hannibal's type right there. Here's another one. This music sucks, man. Anyway, here we go. This is another one. There you go. Two Asian bitches for two hours. There you go. All right. There we go, gentlemen. Y'all have a good one. I will catch y'all later. Salute to y'all.